Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. You are watching Comic Con Africa 2020. And now, without further ado, oh, first of all, let me just introduce who steps into the studio. Uh -huh. We've got Zaid and Patrick. <laughs> but without further ado, we've got the main man, Brett Hart. What's happening, Brett? Uh, I'm just, I'm ready to go. Ready, raring to, raring to hear from everybody. Sweet. <laughs> How's your day going? Um, it's good. We're just kind of waking up here, up here. Cool. It's uh, early. Not not real early, but early for a Saturday. <laughs> okay, you know what, you know what, you know I'm I know you're excited. I, I am nervous. I am nervous <laughs> because like, my whole life, I have been waiting to have the opportunity to have Brett, the hitman heart, give me one of the sunglasses. So Pat gave me one of them, but now Brett, I have two, two, one request and one question. The first request is, when you visit us in South Africa, can you please put Patrick <laughs> into a sharpshooter? Because he's been mean to me the whole day because I'm so excited. And of course, the main question I have to ask you is, of course, the excellence in ex execution, that's who you are. The best there is, the best there was, the best there ever will be. When you look at the current WWE product, some of us fans of yours growing up with you know that you tell a story in the ring, the story of the hero who is you know, beaten down, he rises up in the end. Do you still see that sort of storytelling in the product today? No, it at all. I mean, not, not. I see great, them. <clears throat> I see hard work, hard workers and stuff. They work really hard. They're, but they, they, they don't tell very good stories at all, in my opinion. Is something about um, the wrestling today that um, is is lacking. It's really lacking that. Um, um, well, there's a lot of little things like nobody nobody sells anything anymore. Um, they do some great stuff, and then they just get up and do another high spot like it doesn't like it never even mattered, and they don't get. Uh, at least when I wrestled, like if I took a front turnbuckle or something like that, you know, I, I, I was down. I was I was in jeopardy. And uh, today you could drop the score clock on these guys and they kick out and do a running spot right after. You know, it's, it's that, that's what I, I see. I think um, maybe that's maybe that's just the style today. I mean, I don't know. There's there's these these shows on TV where they have. Um, you know, they're more like uh, athletic contests where guys swing from a rope and then they got to climb a ladder and it's all being timed and stuff like that. And they got to run, jump 20 feet across the thing and they got to swing from a rope. I find wrestling has kind of turned into that where it's like great athleticism, but there's no story whatsoever. And, uh, and uh, I think top to bottom, I mean, from the top of the card to the bottom of the card, they're, they're all worried about the next high spot. And how I find everything looks so rehearsed today. Like it's nothing looks spontaneous, you know, at all. And it it, it bothers me. I, I find I have a hard time watching it. Everything looks so um, set up. And you know, I think what I love about my era or my matches in particular is that they don't look set up. You know, like. Um, I just happen to fall in the right spot, and then I get up and, and then I move or whatever happens. But you know, like in wrestling, they body slam somebody, and then the guy climbs up on top, and then the guy that got body slammed has got to move, to sort of wiggle like a worm to get in the right spot for the guy. And it's like you know, you should have been in the right spot in the first place. You know, the guy setting you up for the for the move should have slammed you in the right spot. You shouldn't have to wiggle like a worm to get over to where you're supposed to be. It seems like nobody. Nobody cares about that stuff. Those are all the little, little things. When I watch wrestling, it's like it, it loses its realism, and um, I think wrestling, um, the best pro wrestlers, always need to pretend it's real, and they're they're not pretending it's very much real at all anymore. It all seems very orchestrated and fabricated, and. I've been a critic of a, a lot of the um, the guys that uh, are in charge of these guys, of the young wrestlers today, that are telling them what to do. 
they don't know. I don't know who these people are anymore. Like uh, the guys that are sort of the foremen to the to the young wrestlers. I would say the vast majority of them are guys that never drew a dime in wrestling. They were never big stars. They were middle card guys that uh, got hired on, and they're telling the wrestlers what to do today. When you know the truth is, they didn't know what to do themselves when they were wrestling, and now they're they're in charge or giving the orders or telling telling guys what to do when you know they're not very qualified. And I don't know where you get qualified wrestlers. Like I'm going to name names of the guys that were great mentors, great teachers. But like Roddy Piper was a great, you know, he could talk to you about what you needed to do in your match, and it made it would make a lot of sense to to a young wrestler. And I think I fit into that category where if I was going to help someone with their matches today, it would come off better. Um, Won't make guys that they have because I don't even sure who they have anymore that are in, like the foremans or whatever but I think they're called producers which is these producers that are producing the wrestling and the guys that are writing the stories for the wrestling shows the, the writers they're all the, the shits I mean, that, in my opinion they're the shit they, they, they never knew anything about wrestling they they turned wrestling into a sort of a fabricated soap opera of what they think wrestling is, but you have to be an experienced wrestler to really understand storytelling, psychology, and you know, like in my day, you know, back going back to the eighties, you know, um, like you start a match. I can remember taking an arm drag or something on somebody in the first few minutes of the match or a headlock. And you sit there in the headlock, and every once in a while you hear the crowd start to boring, and they start kind of getting, kind of like trying to push the, the, the match faster, like you're not going quick enough, or I want more action. And I remember sitting there in the ring and going, nobody tells me how to wrestle. I'm the one entertaining you. I'm the one that's going to tell you how I wrestle. I'm not going to listen. <laughs> and I would dismiss the, the chance of boring. And then I slowly start to build my match. And you know, I'm, after a period of time, those boring chants would never, they would, they would shut up. And so I've learned that, and learned a long time ago, that you never let the fans tell you how to wrestle. But it seems to me in today's wrestling that the fans, whatever they sort of do when they goose you to get, oh, I want more action. Or I want they, the wrestler suddenly jumps up and starts giving you more action. And it's like, oh, we need to get going instead of um, trusting their own instinct and calling their own shots and building their match the way. I mean, I, I will say this much is that when I wrestled, um, I always pictured myself sitting in the front row watching myself. Like I was a big fan mm. and I would sit and study the matches and watch the matches. And I didn't like anyone messing with my story. I wanted to see the uh, whatever they were going to tell the story the wrestlers were going to tell was what I wanted to watch and uh, especially if you have faith in the wrestler that you're that you're a fan of and so I I've always whenever I wrestled in a big match that I, uh, was my favorite matches through my career career whether it was Undertaker or Steve Austin or whoever it was I was in the front row in my head watching that match and I would always kind of go this is a good match. Like, I don't need anybody else to tell me. I, I'm watching wrestling since I was five years old and understanding it and appreciating it. And, you know, I think that the wrestlers today are not, a lot of them probably aren't fans or weren't fans growing up or don't seem to be. And there's not that much of a throwback to, to my generation. But I will say this, I think the 90s wrestling it was probably the best. I think it was the best. Absolutely. I have anybody, the generations that come, it's been 20 years now of wrestling since the 90s. Um, they're not as good. They don't tell as good of stories. They're not as fun to watch. And I have a hard time watching. Yep. <laughs>
Robbie, I think let's just jump straight into those fan questions. Yeah, we've got some fan questions for you, Brett. Hmm. So, Pat, why are we waiting for those, right? Yeah. Your best Brett match from the 90s is your best Brett match? Well, I've discussed this with Brett. It's definitely the Stone Cold Steve Austin one. Oh, whoa, whoa. When, he, when, he, when he put the color on Stone Cold. Definitely. Man. Oh, man, definitely. that was life-changing. Brett, he has a question for you. Um, which WWE wrestler of today would you want to have a wrestling match with? Um... Uh, I think... I would love to wrestle um, Randy Orton. Maybe would be a good yeah, one for me. Yeah. Good, a uh, really good wrestler. I, 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 I love. Uh, actually, would mind wrestling Edge. Yeah. Um, um, I love to wrestle Daniel Bryan. I think he's just to me he's one of the best, maybe one of the greatest. Yeah. I'm. I also, um, I would love to have got in a match with uh, Brock Lesnar, just because I think. He's a real uh, iconic heel, and that would have been a, would have been a good match for me. And I think he's he's actually a really good wrestler. Um, not like Goldberg, um, where it's all hype and stuff like. That. I think, uh, Brock is a is a real pro in the ring, um, and maybe um, um, maybe AJ Styles would be another one yes. that that I think would be really um, we would we could add some great uh, matches together. Right. We have another question for you. You know, while we're waiting, about AJ Styles, recently what we saw he did with The Undertaker, I think that talks to what Brett was saying about wrestlers who can tell stories. So that, that tracks with me. Uh, Kelly's asking, uh, what, what are your thoughts on the next generation of WWE wrestlers? They need to go, all of them need to go back, sit down, and just start watching the 90s wrestling. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, they, they need to, like, I watch wrestling, and some guys will do some amazing moves. Um, you know, incredible stuff. There's wrestlers doing great stuff today. I mean, re unbelievable stuff. Like, we just go, wow, that was so good. Right. I um, made one of them, and, um, well, there's a lot of guys doing great moves. They'll do the, like, they'll do a, a, a hellacious move that, that looks like it really hurt and looks like it really, it looks like if you brought out a stretcher and put the wrestler back on the stretcher, you could carry him back to the dressing room. But I watch wrestling, and they and they get they get right up like nothing happened, like <laughs> right. that it didn't. Hurt. And they when I think they could get so much more mileage out of it, and I think um, you know I I don't know what you watch on like for 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 television down there with with wrestling, but I've been watching this this move in wrestling where. Um, it's just sort of a highlight on one of the big, like to, for a commercial for, for, for WWE. But it's, when I watch, I go, that's what's wrong with wrestling. And then this is a part where it might be Roman Reigns, but I know who it is. I'm not sure who it is, but I know there's a spot where he takes off and runs into the ropes and like, there's nobody there. And then when he dives over the rope, suddenly there's 10 guys get into a huddle on the floor and they cap. <laughs> like, I don't know. To me, it's like, it, it's so set up and so rehearsed. Like, oh, suddenly the 10 guys run to get into the spot to catch him. And it's like, you know, like when I did it, say with Razor Ramon or, or Shawn Michaels, you never see it coming. You never know what I'm doing. All of a sudden, I just take off into the ropes, and I, I never went over the top rope like uh, some of these guys today. But, I mean, I would dive right through the ropes, the top and the second rope, like a spear, and dive out about 10 feet and hit the guy right in the chest, and we go down. And when I think of that, I think of that, to me, seems real. Like, that could really happen, because it really did happen. But, I mean, you don't see it coming five minutes ahead of time where everybody gets in a huddle and it's like, okay, now take off and run and we're all going to catch you. I mean, who cares? I mean, not, you know nobody's going to get hurt when 10 guys are waiting there to catch you. And that's an example in my head of, um, 
what's wrong with wrestling today is they don't think out logically why why would 10 guys suddenly all bump into each other and just suddenly catch a guy in midair you know it just doesn't make any sense to me right you know, so there's a lot of realism that they're not they're not applying realism to wrestling anymore like in my day we used to always say you know if you wouldn't do it in a bar fight you wouldn't do it in a wrestling ring like logically would you really try that move in the in a bar fight like and it's like a lot of times you go no and then guys like Ray Mysterio come along and and I love Ray Mysterio and he's one of the greatest maybe one of the top five wrestlers of all time if not more than even more than that I love Ray Mysterio but he brought such incredible um athleticism yeah. moves to yeah the industry where you go well that if I did that move that good I might actually try that in the bar Like Ray Mysterio can maybe logically get away with some of that stuff in a bar fight, and it's like you start to suspend your imagination a little bit. But it's gone so far now where you watch stuff and you go, nobody would try that in their right mind in a in a real fight. And you got to sometimes step back and go, wrestling needs to be a real contest and a real fight, or at least pretend to be. And they're they're missing that. Right. We have one more question for you from the fans, Brett. And as we're waiting for that, Brett, Pat and I have a special request from you that we can <laughs> share with you after this. Uh, somebody would like to know, do you ever play WWE 2K? Um, I'm not really very good at the games. Right. Um, I, I play around with it, but I don't, I don't, play, very, I don't play very good. Okay. My, my, you know, it's like I'm... Um, I'm not very quick with the buttons and stuff like that. And uh, <laughs> so I would say, <laughs> play the act. <laughs> These two are dying to show you something. Okay, okay, okay. So Brett, right? We want permission to do something, right? So Pat, you warm Brett up while I go and get something real quick, right? Okay, wait. I'm coming. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> okay. So. So, 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 what we want to do is, we, okay, you're going to take that one. <laughs> I'm going to take this one. We want your permission to start the, oh, wait, I need to take a deep breath in, deep breath out. Can Pat and I be the ambassadors for the Heart Foundation here in South Africa, the, the, the South African wing of the Heart Foundation? We've been practicing, so we've got our, we've got our glasses, <laughs> we've got our belts, We want to be your ambassadors here in South Africa. So when you come to South Africa, we can walk around with you and live out our childhood dreams. Can we do it, please? Uh, that would be fine with me. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. So, so, so what's your other name going to be? Me. Yeah, what, who are you going to be? Pat Attack. Pat Attack. Okay, then I'm going to be Zaid, the Thunder of Mutala. He is Brett, the Hitman Heart, the excellence of execution, the best there is, the best there was, the best there ever will be. I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry, Robbie. I sorry. got a bit, a bit emotional. <laughs> And I'm I'll okay. be Mufasa. I'm okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Brett Hart. Thank you so much for giving us your time. Peace and love to you and your family. All right. I, I'm, I look forward to seeing you guys all somewhere down the road. Thanks, Sweet. Brad. Thanks a lot. God bless. God bless. Bless you too, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, the legend, Brad Hart. We're going to have a quick word from our sponsors, but please do not go anywhere because we're coming back with Aubrey Joseph.